sugar can bind with other things like fats and proteins. And when sugar binds with these proteins, it does a couple of things. First off, it renders those proteins useless. Their function is lost. And so if you think about a disease like my daughter's cystic fibrosis, she has a faulty protein, and that's the whole basis of her disease. And so when you render these proteins useless and you've lost their function, you have some type of cascading effect. Um, proteins are going to be your building blocks. They're your mechanism of communication between cells. I mean, they're what keep the body moving, running, and growing and communicating. And so when you lose those proteins, that is gone. Uh, the other problem is that these ages, these when the when the sugar binds with the proteins and the fats, you end up with advanced glycation end products, ages, as they're called. And these ages become sources of free radical production. And these free radicals are what cause oxidative stress in your body. So oxygen is the ultimate electron acceptor in metabolism of cells. And this is true for animals, plants. I mean, ox we need oxygen for life. And that's why, because it's involved in metabolism. It's involved in these metabolic pathways. And what you can end up with is a strange number of electrons on that oxygen molecule, which gives it a strange charge. It gives it a reactive charge. And that reactive charge can bounce around through your DNA and your cells and create oxidative stress. And that's the whole reason that we eat antioxidants, because these reactive oxygen species can form, they can cause oxidative stress. And so you have to combat those reactive oxygen species with antioxidants. I know this is... That was a mouthful there. <laughs> it was a mouthful. I hope everyone understood that. <laughs> um, so what they have seen is they've looked at a variety of diseases and they see that there is an element of glycation and inflammation that is related to things like Alzheimer's and liver disease and things that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be related to sugar specifically. So I think when people think about sugar, they're usually thinking about metabolic disease and diabetes. But these are diseases that aren't necessarily associated with that. And they can measure that sugar does cause the development of ages. And then they've also measured that ages cause these diseases, but they haven't necessarily made that direct connection between sugar and disease, if that makes sense. Yep. So in my opinion, that's probably the next step I mean, that's where I would like to see the research go is to see how it is that sugar causes glycation and how glycation ends up causing disease. But I think that's a big part of sugar that people aren't quite paying attention to is how it actually can result in these other diseases. And that makes sense. You know, we often hear that, you know, sugar is inflammatory. And so that's just one of the, the mechanisms there that can be inflammatory that and of course, it spikes your blood glucose, which means, you know, it starts a whole other cascade of events. <clears throat> but um, goodness, we could go on and on. We could have a whole podcast on sugar. I probably should actually. You probably should. I mean, and sugar is always so interesting to me, too, because I've I've tried to do some work in my children in my son's school on changing policies and things like that and just Ooh, really trying to persuade. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> so, um, you know, but I've even tried to find different studies to support to support my argument. And it's really interesting that there are very few to no studies showing that sugar has impacts on behavior. And that's, I know it's shocking. So the I've even found studies that show that if you give kids sugar before they take a test, that they have improved test scores as a result. And so I've really found this whole lack of compelling evidence to talk people into this stuff beyond this glycation argument, because I think that this for a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand disease. They don't understand what it's going to actually be like to have a disease and what it's actually going to be like for that to be your life. And they don't understand it until they're in it. And so when you preach prevention, 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 a lot of the time they just don't hear you. And 
so that's why I'm looking for those behavioral information. Like, hey, yeah. if you stop feeding your kids sugar, they'll get better test scores. And the evidence just isn't there. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, I, oh, bummer, huh? <laughs> I mean, the, the test thing. I mean, I, first thing I think of is like, well, who funded that study? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go into any teacher's classroom right after lunch at any age and tell me that sugar doesn't do anything and walk around the lunchroom and see what these kids are eating. Like I spent, you know, a year as a teacher and I would, I had lunch duty occasionally and I'm like, kids are eating like full, like king size bags of M&Ms like for lunch. And I'm like, yeah. And I'll be like, what are you doing? That's not food. And of course, <laughs> you know, the stuff that they're giving in the cafeteria isn't food either, but no. it's not a bag of m <laughs> Right. And, and then I'm like, oh, my, Every time, no matter like what group it was, like the class after lunch was like the worst. It was like the hardest, you know, to get anything done. So the the whole higher test score thing, like what world is that? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a it's it's hard. It's amazing. I mean, it's the evidence is um, it's very skewed. 